I know that there are a lot of fans of Fallout out there, and I know that a lot of those fans have been slighted <laughs> in the recent years with Fallout 76 and all of its controversies, but now we have a game that I believe is comparable, and um, I think that a lot of fans of the Fallout series would have a really, really good kick out of it, and this game is called The Outer Worlds. And I know that I'm absolutely not the first person to talk about The Outer Worlds being very, very similar to Fallout in its gameplay and its, uh, its world structure and uh, even its dialogue boxes uh, with them being very similar to Fallout uh, New Vegas, for example, or Fallout 3 even. Um, and that's because it's developed by the same studio that developed Fallout New Vegas, uh, Obsidian. And I know that I would not be the first person to say that um, Fallout New Vegas may be the best Fallout game. Uh, I know that that's a, a pretty, I, I don't know if that's a controversial opinion or if it's a, a pretty regular opinion. Um, <clears throat> and even one of my friends thinks that Fallout New Vegas is the best Fallout. So I wouldn't really discount that. So now we have a new game that is very uh, similar to Fallout in the, uh, in the play style. And um, I didn't really think about getting it because uh, I'm not super, like, I really like the Fallout uh, idea. But Bethesda open world games, I kind of get, um, uh, I guess, a little bored <laughs> running around and not exactly having, um, or maybe having too many objectives, uh, having too many things to do just kind of, um, it kind of overwhelms me. So I kind of just like do whatever I want and run around and just wreak havoc on cities and um, then just kind of fizzle out of the game. Like, um, I, I guess I guess I'm kind of a pretender in that kind of way because I say I, I like Skyrim, but I've never beaten the game. And I like Fallout 4, but I've never beaten the game. So <clears throat> I was a little hesitant to download the game, but I was watching YouTube and um, Spawnwave actually said that uh, in, in his video on Outer Worlds that uh, the Outer Worlds is free with Game Pass. So uh, I don't use my Xbox a whole lot. Uh, I, I let my brother use it. So I had I got Game Pass for PC, but I didn't know whether it would actually be on Game Pass for PC because I know the library is kind of limited at the moment. Uh, and sure enough, it was. So um, I thought, yeah, I'll just go ahead and try it out because like I do I do really like the gameplay, but sometimes I just don't, or a, a Fallout games, but sometimes I just don't have the, um, the, the time to play these kind of big open world games. So, uh, I download the game and I start playing it and I, th I'm pretty sure I'm in love with the game. Um, I immediately love the gameplay. Um, I like the setting. Uh, the setting is not like Fallout where it's a post-apocalyptic America. It's, uh, it's out in space and, um, basically you have this, this big, this hub ship kind of, which, uh, acts as your hub world and you travel between planets and even a, a bigger spaceship and, uh, moons. So that's how you get around different sections of the world. So it's not like completely open world. It's kind of semi open world in that kind of sense. So you travel between planets and I kind of like that. So it's not like super overwhelming where you have like this enormous area where you have uh, like a million different quest markers out and uh, you have to go like all over the map, like go from here to here and uh, just, just to complete one quest. And I really, really like that because you have a smaller yet, they're, they're still big. They're big enough to, to feel like complete uh, levels in a game, I would say. But you have uh, many different quests in that one confined area. So you know you're not traveling literally all across the entire game map. So it's refreshing in that sense, and uh, it even offers fast travel. So you don't have to, you don't have to walk all the way across the the world if you have if you don't want to. You only have to do it once, and then you unlock a fast travel spot. So that's that's great. And uh, changing up the location of the game, the, the locations is uh, kind of refreshing too, because uh, Fallout and Skyrim, spe Skyrim specifically, kind of gets a little bland to me because it's it's a lot of uh, gray. It's just gray. <laughs> so being able to travel to different planets or even the moons uh, to just get a different scenery is really refreshing. I like that a lot. Um, so I know that I've been talking like pretty pretty good about the game, but there, there are a couple things that uh, I'm not incredibly fond of. Um, uh, Spawnwave talked about the, uh, the character models looking like they're from... Looking like they're from Fallout 3, and uh, 
I was like, eh, no, they, no, they don't look too bad when I was watching his video, but uh, playing the game, they, they kind of do. They look, <laughs> they look old. They look like Obsidian hasn't really updated their technology a whole lot with, uh, with the character models. The mouths kind of just don't fit, and uh, the character faces are uh, pretty static. But that's not anything that's going to break the game for me. Um, I play the game for the gameplay and the story. So the dialogue is just it's it, it's just options that I, I skip through a lot anyway. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, another thing that he said in his video was that he saw a lot of pop in and uh, load times were pretty bad. Um, I know that he was playing on the Xbox One X and uh, I'm playing on PC and I don't I don't have a beast of a PC or anything. So don't don't get me wrong. Um, but the, the pop-in is not horrible. Um, I, it, it Even if it was, it wouldn't really bother me all too much. Like, I played Breath of the Wild on my Switch, and we all know how that game runs on the Switch. It's not, like, super great, uh, especially when you go into certain areas. So a pop-in isn't really... It doesn't bother me all that much. And uh, load times have been completely normal. Uh, I don't I don't have my game installed on, a, on an SSD. I just have it on, like, a, a standard hard drive. So... I don't really know. Maybe it's just a console thing. Maybe it's just not super optimized for consoles, or maybe it's taking a longer time to load the uh, the 4K textures that might come with an Xbox One X. Because I don't I don't play in 4K. I play the 1080p. So maybe that could be it. So I think Obsidian did a really really good job with changing the environment of the game because Fallout got stale and Skyrim got stale, but you travel between planets so regularly that the change of scenery is it's very welcome uh i think they did a really good job with the coloring uh making everything super vibrant and uh, pop out at you um it's a little blurry on pc which is a little which is weird but I, i've read something on reddit that i think i can i think i can turn on the blurriness of the of the game but that's that's beside the point i suppose and I'm really excited to see all the worlds that I haven't seen yet because I've only played for like three or four hours total so far. Now, one thing that I think I probably would work on is the um, the enemy variety. Um, at least as of right now, uh, at being only a few hours in, I've only seen, I think, maybe three or four different types of enemies with like beefier versions of like the harder, uh, like the, the harder version of that one enemy. So I've seen just the little lizard things on the ground and I've seen like two different types of bandits and a couple different robots, but that's really it. And I've traveled between I think um, I think three or two planets and a moon. So you would think that they would have uh, maybe a little bit more differences in their uh, in their fauna, but I don't know. Maybe maybe that just comes later, and uh, I just have to wait and find out. But that's one thing that I I probably would change. That's the one thing I grabbed about with Breath of the Wild is that the enemy variety wasn't plentiful enough like they had a they had a few different species of enemies and a couple they had a couple different colors of enemies that show um like the strength of that enemy so maybe we'll have like another situation like that but i've been dealing with that for years and years and years with world of warcraft and i know world of warcraft players know what i'm talking about well i think that's going to do it for today um i just want to do just make this quick video on uh the outer worlds because i'm really enjoying it uh i think that anybody that likes fallout should definitely uh, give it a shot, especially if, if you have an Xbox or a PC with Game Pass. You can get you can get Game Pass for a dollar and try out the game. And I I believe that it's it's completely worth it. You can beat it in a month, I'm sure, and then cancel Game Pass, and then you played an amazing game for a dollar. So I would absolutely recommend that. But let me know what you guys think about The Outer Worlds. Have you played it? Do you plan on playing it? What console do you want to play it on? What Or, or do you plan on playing on PC? Or do you not plan on playing it at all and you think that the game looks really dumb and, you know, maybe it's not your thing? Let me know down in the comments below and leave this video a like if you liked it and uh, give it a dislike if you didn't and I'll see you in the next one.